Hey there, my name's Fran Sands, I'm founder of myboxingcoach.com. Uh, welcome to the third episode of um, these Q&A clinics that I've been running, asking a bunch of my online clients to send me questions in and, and it's been working out roughly each week I've been getting in the gym and sorting out um, some answers. This week we've got four questions covering four distinct um, areas. The first area we're going to look at is a long range hooking, long range right hooking specifically. The second, uh, the speed ball, a uh, piece of boxing equipment. The third, um, someone would like to know my favourite combination punches. And the fourth uh, is any other tips for southpaw versus orthodox other than the conventional getting your lead foot outside. The opponent's lead foot. Okay, let's jump straight in. The first question is from a um, a mate of mine down in our wonderful capital city of London. This is Dave Waterman. Dave's a fellow coach. He coaches in, in Battersea Boxing Club. Um, and he supported me for years, actually, what, what I do online. He's a, he's a great fella. So, Tim says, I saw an interesting video of Tim Witherspoon, really good former heavyweight champion of the world, speaking about fighting recently. He commented on never throwing the long-range right hook due to the distance of travel and offering an open target. Of course, some boxers choose that shot. Joe, Dave's been following Joe Ham, Commonwealth Games boxer, and been to a few of his fights, and he likes to throw long-range hooks to the body and use it to good effect. I wonder um, how long he will get away with that, and as his career progresses, his level of opponent improves, how he might be stung for it. Right. The long range right hook, so that's that one, okay? Not the straight right hand, on the arc round. Okay, I get what Tim Witherspoon says, and you've got to listen to guys like him, he's a former world champion, fantastic fighter, just uh, quite a difficult career for, for a number of reasons, but really good fighter in the ring. Um, so he says it's the, it's the distance of travel. Yeah, okay, I'll buy that. Technically, it's the punch that travels the longest. You could argue the long-range uppercut might be a similar sort of distance, but still, yeah, I'll buy that. It's the longest distance travel than any punch of any shot. And does it leave an open target? Well, possibly. But it's this concept of using the word never, never throw this, never throw that. So... We've got six, roughly six, six long-range punches, two straights, two long-range hooks, two long-range uppercuts. If I never use my long-range right hook, I'm denying myself 16% of my long-range weaponry. That doesn't feel right to me. Um, you see, I was always told as a young boxer as well, never to lead with the left hook. So never throw the left hook straight off. And I could kind of get that it made more sense. So let's think about the right hand just for a moment and we come back to the left hook. If I throw a long range right hand and my opponent makes that I'm throwing that shot, um, if, as long as I'm properly defended on, on my left side, the only shot he can really bring to bear would be a long range hook himself, trying to get it inside my long range right hook, or a jab. So if I get it wrong, I'm at risk of taking a jab or a long range left hook, ne neither of which are two wheel you know, sort of knockout blows. If I lead with the left hand on the other hand, literally, I leave myself exposed to a straight right hand. Now, <laughs> that's the kind of thing that puts you to sleep. So um, I kind of get that bit, but I've, I've never used the word never. Do I think that Joe Ham or any other one, anyone else who uses the long range right hook? I, look, I don't know. I, I actually believe that the long range right hook is a fantastic weapon especially before or after straight right hands, it's a, it's a brilliant shot. Really um, befuddles the fences because it's difficult to defend against. I don't think Joe Ham will get punished or found out because of that shot. I think it's it's nice to see someone using that. So on this occasion, I'm going to have to disagree with Tim with a spoon as much as that. As much as that irks me, because it, I, I used to love that. I remember him coming over here and boxing Frank Bruno many, many years ago. Um, Frank Bruno was the big, powerful sort of British heavyweight, and, and Witherspoon handed out such a boxing lesson. Really fantastic boxer. But on this occasion, I'm going to disagree. So use those long-range right hooks. Don't become predictable, obviously. Hope that makes sense, Dave. Uh, okay, the second question. This question is from um, Pat Larkin. 
So Pat says, I know that you're quite anti the use of the speedball in boxing training. But if I go onto YouTube, I can see videos of the greatest of the sport, past and present, and Muhammad Ali, Sugar Ray, Leonard, Floyd Mayweather, Lomachenko, etc., on the speed bag. So my question is, have they been wasting their time completely training with this piece of equipment, or does it have some redeeming features? Okay, so we don't have a speedball in this gym. A lot, a lot of it really is down to practicality and noise. The things are bloody noisy when well, you've got a gym full of people. <coughs> anyway, excuse me. And the secondly is people often don't know how to use it. So lads will, guys will smash it with, with the hardest shot they've got and the thing will go flying across the air, constantly replacing them. Um, they are really good for conditioning of the shoulder muscles at the, uh, on the upper shoulders. Okay, So these are doing this type of stuff. Do I believe it adds anything to um, the technical side? Maybe some improved coordination maybe some improvements in speed but I think it's, it's a technique all of its own I think it looks fantastic on cameras on camera that's why you see pros doing it a lot um, so yeah I think it does have redeeming features would I have them in here if I had an endless supply of them yeah maybe I would um, but you know I, if, if you ask me what do I think is more beneficial of 15 minutes on a speed bag or me spending 15 minutes with a boxer on technical pads or focus mitts, then the latter wins every time. If you compare a speed bag with a double end bag or a floor to ceiling ball, the double end bag works every time because it, it brings so much more. I think the, the speed bag is a, is, is a showpiece piece of equipment. Um, in many ways, I guess, it's similar to the, all the speed pads that are going on these days. Um, which you know look great on camera but I, I do question the the true value of, of of those but i guess that's another question um so i hope that answers it pat as you know i'm not uh, totally opposed to speed bags but um i'd need to keep paracetamol in my pocket at all times i guess for the headaches next question from roy i would like to know what is your favorite combination punches um the ones that land, Roy. Um, look, I could now sit down and reel off five or six combinations. Oh, well, for me, the right jab, right uppercut, left hook, left hook, right hook body is the ideal combination. Or oh, the double left hook body, left hook head, right hook head is fantastic. But look, it don't, doesn't give you anything. Okay, So let me give you some pointers about what I think of combinations. Number one, most successful combinations are two maybe three punches long single series of punches one two three so let's go one go one two three three shots bang that is the most you're going to get away with really or that's the most i would advise before putting in some kind of body movement defense or foot movement um, and then you can string another two punches together okay so there you've got so if i could throw a left hook right up a cut left hook I could roll with that left hook, throw another left hook and a right hook, and that's a five punch combination interspersed with that skill in the centre, the roll. So you attach punch, bunches of punches together by using um, a body movement or a foot movement. And that would then allow you to take that initial three punch combination and turn it into a nine punch combination. Okay, so I think aim to, to fire two or three shots with a skill or defense in between and then another few shots and class that all as a combination because it is okay it is what you're doing is avoiding the shots coming back and continuing your combination some tips you know look after hitting the body the head is always a nice place to go to after using a hook an uppercut is always nice, and vice versa, a, a hook follows an uppercut fantastically well. Okay, so attack the body with a right uppercut, uh, attack the head with the same right uppercut, and then bring in a left hook. These type of things, few little principles around my favourite combinations. Hope that's helped, I'm, I don't want to just give you reel off five or six, because I don't think you're learning. Your challenge is to think about how you can put them together and build your combinations using those simple 
simple rules and uh, my final one is of Mickey um, and Mickey says do I have any other tips for using uh, for a South Pole versus Orthodox and Mickey by the way born in New York lives in Oregon now I'm reliably informed my sources tell me um, okay so do you have any tips or some insights on Orthodox versus South Pole other than trying to win the battle of the lead foot to the outside I tried to get them to do some obvious things like use the lead hand hook as a counterpunch to an opponent's jab and perhaps leading out with the backhand instead of the jab more often. Each way that Mickey describes there is really good. What Mickey means by the left lead foot, so yeah, commonly the tactics you use, uh, a southpaw will always try and get his right foot or her right foot outside to the outside of the orthodox opponent's lead foot and vice versa. So it often becomes a battle of the front feet to try and get position. So that one boxer keeps the other in the strike zone whilst he's or she is in the safe zone. Um, Mickey's right as well. The mantra is always there. Right hands work very well against self pause. Um, so I'd, I'd pick up two additional things. The first one is trying to get that lead hand block. Okay, So if you can block or parry with, with the lead hand with the opponent's jab, so the incoming southpaw jab, and then instantly turn it into a jab. So what you've got is one, two, or one, two, and then launch the aggressive attack behind them. Okay, so it's parry the hand, block, and turn it into a jab immediately. The second one is one that I actually picked up off watching Manny Pacquiao. So if I'm an orthodox against the southpaw, if I move that way, Obviously, I'm moving towards the powerful backhand of the southpaw. That's if I move in an absolutely straight line across the opponent. So, when you move that way, push slightly diagonally backwards. Okay. So, as you're moving across, the opponent will think that you're moving into range of their backhand, but you're not. You're going to be just beyond range because you've started at long range. You move out very slightly uh, and then you immediately fire back in with your own one two okay, really quick this so so what you're talking about is is effectively a push away and push in but you're doing it slightly diagonally to the to the right Pacquiao uses this amazingly well against orthodox opponents and, and he, he defies convention by not really bothering with the lead foot sort of battle that usually commences between southpaw and orthodox so try that two additional little things there Mickey I hope that they've uh, they add something in to help you work with the boxers and that brings to an end our um, our Q&A number three sign up to my videos and emails and stuff down below and I look forward to seeing you um, next time cheers